All right, so this is a, this is a widget that we're going to turn into a LiPo-powered widget, uh, complete with USB charging. Um, so this is a Mario coin block that goes ba-ding! It makes that noise. Uh, now, this thing is normally powered by three LR41 batteries, which are these tiny little button cells here. It normally takes three of those in the back, uh, and that provides it with a nominal four and a half volts. But the problem is, is those tiny little button cells don't actually carry enough current to power this thing properly. And with the LR41s in it, it actually sounds quite sickly. It sort of goes, Ehh! and you know, and, and that kind of thing. So what I did was I jumper wired um, a JST connector on it. And as you can see, I'm actually powering this from an 18650 at the moment, which makes it sound a little bit more healthy. This 18650 is actually flat though. So it's a bit undervolted. So it's still not perfect. And as you can see, Watch those LEDs, see how they brighten up? So what we want to do is provide it with more consistent power. If I plug in a, um, a fully charged cell, we won't have that issue. Um, so what I want to do is I want to fit a LiPo battery inside it, and if possible, with charging as well. Because we've already powered it from a LiPo battery, but this is kind of a bit... You, I can't carry that around with me. So what we're going to do, I'm going to unplug that. And I want to open this thing up and see if we can find a space to fit a battery in it. Now, you might be asking yourself, how on earth are you going to fit a LiPo cell into this tiny thing? The answer to that is a very small one. So here is a really small LiPo cell. So this is a, uh, a 40, 20, 30. So that is, yeah, 4 mil thick, uh, then 30 mil long and 20 mil wide. Uh, and that's how we work that out. And again, it's 3.7 volts, and this is a tiny little 0.2 amp hour cell. So this is a, only a tiny little midget thing, but it only needs to be a little midget thing to power this tiny little widget. It'll probably only last for about 15 or 20 minutes, but I don't care, this is a joke. So um, let's see if we can find a, a space for this in here. And we're also gonna need to find space for a charging circuit, because it's all very well putting the battery in there, but I need to actually be able to charge it as well. So in order to charge it, I also want to put in this little charger board. So what this is, this is very similar to a power bank board, um, except all it does is charge the cell. It doesn't have a boost circuit on it. It just has a charge control chip on it. So you've got USB micro input, or you can just jump five volts in, uh, and then it's got bat battery plus and minus on it. And again, I've just got a JST connector on this just where I've been testing it. So I wanna find a home for these two back to back somewhere in there and that's fairly plausible so let's open this thing up and see how much space is inside it by shining a torch into the back of it i think it's got a reasonable amount of space in there so let's see if that holds true okay so this is more or less flush to the front uh, of the casing so we want to bury everything, well, basically where that battery port is. So if I removed this and then dremeled off the battery port, we would have quite a bit of space back there and it would just about be wide enough for the battery, I think. We might have to put it diagonally across there, maybe. I think we can. Uh, I think we can just about squeeze that in. So we need to remove this board. So let's uh, remove these heat stakes. We can mount the board like somewhere up the edge there. Imagine this isn't here and we're working flush to the edge. And then if we just snip a little hole in the side of it there, we'll have our USB micro port sticking out. And then what we do is we jump from battery plus and minus onto the LiPo cell and onto the positive and negative of this circuit board. This circuit board, because the LR41s add up to four and a half volts, even when we're on charge, um, the device will not be overvolted. So we don't need any kind of regulation here because the, the range of this thing is going to be between 3 volts and 4 and 4.2 volts. 
So we're well within the acceptable range to power this thing. So we don't need to do, worry about any kind of regulation there. All we need is just a little charger board and our LiPo circuit built into this thing. And we can turn it into a battery powered one. <laughs> a LiPo powered one even. I never said this was gonna be any good, by the way. I promise nothing. This is just proof of concept. Right, now we need to sort out the case, which needs a little cut out of there. I think our board is sticking out just a little bit too much. Can I just squeeze that in? Can I be cheeky? No. I'll tell you what I might be able to do though. I think I can fix this. Ah, uh, right. We're sitting too high. We need a few more mils clearance. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. How are we gonna find that little bit of extra space? All right, now we're ready. Here we go. Is it all gonna go in? It's working, it's working. There we go. Right. I'll run some glue around the edge, clamp that up, and there we go. 
And finally, if I plug in a charger, there you go, there's our charge light. Jobs are good, and that charge light will turn blue when it's actually charged. God, that looks like an angry spot on the camera. <laughs> there we go. Now it's a USB rechargeable coin block. How ridiculous. So here's another example. Uh, this is an electronic scale kit that I bought um, from uh, from Banggood. Um, it's just a cheap set of electronic scales that comes as a kit that you assemble yourself. It's not particularly accurate, but you know, it serves a purpose. Uh, so this runs on a five volt supply. And like many of these DIY kits, it doesn't have its own internal power supply. Um, it just comes with a barrel jack on the side. I'm currently running it from a bench power supply. And there are loads of these little kits that I've got knocking about. Um, that are ripe for being converted for LiPo use because that none of them have internal batteries or their own power supplies. And it's a pain in the backside actually connecting them up to a bench power supply. So what can we do with this thing? So the first thing I need to know is, can it run on anything other than five volts? Does it need a stable five volts? So we've got it running on five volts on the bench power supply. I'm gonna start turning the power down a little bit. So let's go down to four and a half. Okay, so we've lost a little bit of contrast off of the display, but its accuracy hasn't drifted. So how low can we go? Can we go down to 4 volts? Right, that screen is becoming really hard to see now. We've also dropped a, we've also dropped a gram, so the accuracy of the device is starting to drift, and at 4 volts, the screen is barely usable. So obviously we're, we're looking at a 3.7 volt nominal dropping down as low as three and a half volts. So, I mean, if we drop down to 3.7, that screen is more or less illegible and we've dropped to 39 grams. So the accuracy is, is compromised and the screen is basically unusable at raw battery voltage. So this is going to need some actual regulation to power it from a LiPo cell. Very conveniently, of course, five volt is USB voltage. So what I can do is I can take this USB power bank controller, and obviously you've seen me messing around with these already, um, and if we remove the USB, I mean, I could just take a USB cable out of that and wire it in, or I could, of course, just get a USB to barrel jack adapter and run this thing from a power bank, but where's the fun in that? Um, so what we can do is if we remove the USB port off the top of this, and we solder on uh, some jumper wires off of the five volt output from it, we can then connect a LiPo at the other end, and we now have a five volt supply and a LiPo charger with a micro USB jack on it in a single unit. And this thing will probably run quite happily from an 18650. So I can take this 18650 cell holder here, stick one of those in it, the right way around of course, and I think there's actually room to cram all of that into the back of the device. So we put that back in there and just like sort of glue that down tactfully on top of it and we can cram the whole lot into the back. And the bonus point is because it's an 18650 holder, um, it can charge 18650s, but also I can just change the cell out if I've got a flat cell in there and I just want to swap it out for a different 18650. So that gives me a removable and replaceable and rechargeable LiPo cell. Oh, I don't have any shrink wrap that's an appropriate size for this, so I'm going to use the good old fallback of Captain Tape. So I'm just going to wrap some of this around it, which doesn't look very nice, but I don't really care how this looks. We're ghetto modding. Okay, right, now I'll connect the 18650 holder up to there. 
the leads on this are all obnoxiously too long. I probably should have shortened them down. Just coil that up a little bit. We're just gonna stuff it all inside. And I need that to be like there. I might, could I just take that on and just be really scumbag? I probably could. Don't worry, I have a more neat and cool project that comes up after this one. This is more of a sort of just a messing around proof of concept kind of thing. I'm not even sure if I'll leave this in here permanently. I'm just showing you that you can do this. And theoretically, something that's as simple as this will work just fine. Right, let's stick a 18650 in that. The point of this exercise is to make this thing wireless rather than uh, um, convenient, as it were. If I wanted convenient, I would have bought a pre-built one. Uh, oh, those are a little bit short, those wires in there. All right, it's in. Now we'll just stuff all that in there. Whoops. Accidentally shorting things. I should have heat shrunk all of that. Okay, let's turn that around so that goes that way. Oh, those wires are terribly in the way. But hopefully it should work. It doesn't fit very well because this case doesn't fit very well. There we go. And skadoosh. There we go. And the power bank controller does actually have an LED buried underneath it. But that is now working. So let's reset that and I'll just see if it's still accurate by measuring my phone weight. Yeah, that's correct. That's about the weight my phone is. I think it's like 165 without the case or something like that. So yeah, there we go. And now we have a battery powered set of scales powered from an 18650 and obviously if you um, the amount for how long that battery is going to last that's going to depend on uh, the capacity of that particular 18650 and the draw of this uh, this thing doesn't use a lot of power um, it's like less than 100 milliamps I think um, so it'll probably do all right from just this is a really crap 18650 and it'll probably do okay from that but because it's only going to be used for very short periods of time it doesn't need a particularly good battery in it. So yeah, there we have it. That's pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's find something else to power with LiPo. And also just for reference, because I didn't actually mention it earlier on, um, the, the power lead that I plugged my uh, battery setup into, that is just jumpered onto the bottom of the barrel jack. So there's the original power input port on the side there. And I've literally just jumped onto the positive and negative pins on the bottom of the circuit board there. And that goes up to the JST connector, which I've then plugged all of this affair into. So that's nothing fancy there. Just jumped onto the positive and negative of the board. 